Yeah, I know. It's, it's a problem. Our big filthy sock. I don't think you can go up. Right, take a look real close. Wow. Last week, the Polo team received another shipment of clams. During the process, Andrew discovered something that he thinks is hindering the ability to keep the clams alive. He believed that GFO particles are being suspended in the water, and this is what's causing the clams to be unhappy. It's almost right. It's full. Balance zero? Yeah. Yeah, better. It's a nice small movement. The team came together and created the DIY GFO filter, built completely from scratch. And the results, they seem to be helping. If you haven't had a chance to check out the build, you can get caught up with the link in the description below. Why don't you guys take it away? So as you can see, the uh, smaller one on the clam tank was a good proof of concept. Andrew saw results right away with that. That's been working really well. It's also catching the GFO dust as well as the carbon dust. Maybe we'll see an improvement in lateral line. Maybe the GFO dust reacts similar to the carbon dust. The regular reefer like myself, and I used to use GFO, this was my dilemma where I ran GFO into a sock and the sock was constantly red and orange that I thought I was collecting it when in, in fact, in theory, I wasn't. So if you at home have anything to comment, leave those comments below. Stay tuned because we got improvements. Like and subscribe, we got a lot coming up. It's a busy day in the lab. Right behind Alex, Andrew and the team are working on the lights on one of the quarantine tanks. The coral don't seem to be happy and he makes yet another discovery with the ceiling lights affecting the coral. Turn the lights off and you'll see how much better it is. This ceiling light is screwing up. Look how look how, look how much nicer the corals are without the ceiling lights. Max, yeah. I think this acantho is not getting enough light when it's underneath. Maybe. Yeah. This one might be able to move this logo up a little over there. Like just on that rock. This Ghani, I think it's blowing too much. There you go. You want to just lower this? Is that what you want? Yeah, I'm just going to drop it. It's... Or I'm going to like lower the number. Just, why don't I just move it up to the Andrew and Max continue to make small adjustments on the tank. Quarantine is the first step in the polo process, so getting these tanks dialed in properly really makes a difference on coral health. Andrew works on optimal placement of the coral based on lighting and flow. The attention to detail, it's what keeps these corals happy. Because of the success on the first DIY GFO filter, Andrew decided he wants to add one onto the 17,000 gallon tank. This setup will be scaled to fit in the sump located in the sub-basement. Yeltsin's already in the lab creating a prototype. Yels, what are we doing here? Yeah, put the sump tank downstairs with the filter. Yeah, we're uh, the basket for some filter floss underneath the stock that captures the GFO. Yes. So we have double, we have double, double, we have double, double protection. The filter setup will be similar to its smaller version with minor modifications to fit the size. As Yeltsin goes to test the prototype, he quickly realizes that this is not going to be as easy of an install as he thought due to the space and the pipes. The 17,000 gallon sump has had its fair amount of changes throughout the past couple of years, from additional filter installations to plumbing changes. The DIY GFO filter will be another expansion on an already amazing sump. The team quickly meets to discuss options to make it work. Yeah, I know, it's, it's a problem. They decide to head back upstairs to figure out how to make this work. It's time to go back to the drawing board. On the way back up, Andrew stops to take a minute and admire the beautiful coral and fish. Sometimes it's important to take a step back and remember why we're all in this hobby. This moment doesn't last very long because his coral are asking him for treats. No livestock goes hungry at Polo Reef. Not on Andrew's watch. Don, did you have you fed these month, mothers? Well, this one wants food. There's no fish in it, so you can, right? Coral feed several different ways. When there's physical food, they'll extend their tentacle-like arms to grab their meal and place it in their mouths. It's a mesmerizing process that you never get sick of watching. Meanwhile, back in the lab, the team works on troubleshooting the DIY GFO filter not fitting in the sump, and they begin building the next model. John, Joe, and Yeltsin tackle the build and run through how it will work. 
we're going to use this 90 up top, and we're just going to come down and go right into it. We might we might need two of these. Mission soft. What? Mission soft. Okay. Cool it now so it dries. All right. Next part of the mission is downstairs. During the build, Andrew pops back in, and he's super surprised at what the team came up with. Oh, <laughs> look what you got in your building! And then out comes here another bed. This is the in, this is the out, but there'll be another bag here. Right. So it's going to come in here, bubble off. So, so it doesn't pound as much, and then it goes through double. Yeah, but these are just single. Those are just right. single. Yeah. Yeah. We split it. We're splitting it. The time has come, the team is prepped, and ready to install their second version of the DIY GFO filter for the 17,000 gallon tank. They take the filter down into the sub basement, gather their supplies, and start the plumbing process. This is what the Polo team lives for. The plan is simple. They cut a portion of the pipe and run it down into the DIY GFO filter. The water will then pass through the filter socks, grabbing out any GFO particles. After the filter, the water will then be returned back into the sump. It's a simple concept that could change the way Polo Reef sets up tanks in the future. So guys, you can see from this video that Joe and Jonathan did a terrific job. They put their heads together and their brains and they made two great do-it-yourself filters you're already seeing tremendous results from this. The tank is significantly clearer. The corals look better. After seeing what we're seeing, me and Jada have been talking about it, so possibly creating another drum in line with that drum to create like a settling chamber where it goes from one to the next to eliminate 100% because even though we have three socks, the last sock is still collecting a little bit that's what we're trying to improve what we already did because and and like andrew said i mean it's tremendous difference in in the 17k i mean no ozone and the water is as clear if not clearer fish looking better corals looking better the protein skimmer maintenance has been drastically cut down because there's a lot less red gfo dust in the skimmate so we're getting a longer period between washing them so it seems to be helping all around Alex the vet arrives and begins his routine checks on the coral and fish. What started as a normal polo reef check quickly changed. Alex the vet has seen it all, so when something piques his interest, you know it's important. So this is why I'm a big advocate for trioscopes, microscopy. So here we have a coral with a flatworm. Even here, you can see the, the worm right there, but it's not really apparent until you start time lapsing it. Now you start seeing kind of move. So take a look real close. It's right here. So okay. this little gelatinous ball moving. The translucent worm he discovered, it can't be viewed with the naked eye. And the only way to witness the movement is through a microscope with a time lapse, making more discoveries. He calls Joe over to take a look at this one. Wow. No, he, he can go on. Yeah. I don't think he can go up. Yeah. He's so flat that yeah. I wanted to create a flat look mm -hmm. that the edges came to a sharp downturn. Yeah that nothing will curl up because they don't know how to make the time. Yeah. See, look at it. There's no connection. So like, yeah. when the acro is encrusted, there is a rat. Yeah. They're just trying to climb the edge. But He's going to climb up because he has, he's already on the edge. Yeah. But he cannot connect, go up on the pole. No. Huh. Wow. Oh, well, we're going to find out. There's going to be more improvements in the future. Uh, they have some other great ideas. Thanks, guys. Have a great weekend. Polo Reef will continue to monitor the success over time and share them with everyone at home. So make sure you stay tuned. Leave a comment down below of something innovative that you might have built for your tank. We'd love to hear about it. If there's one thing about this hobby that we know, it's that it'll keep you on your toes. We might all strive for perfection knowing that we'll most likely never achieve it. But why stop trying? It's things like building a DIY GFO filter that keep this hobby moving forward. When a problem arises, the solutions might be right there in your home. And there's nothing better than sharing those successes and failures with the world. That's what keeps Andrew and the team going. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click that bell to stay updated on everything Polo Reef. Until next time. To bring it down here and put it here, it's complicated. It's like a thousand pounds. Ready? Oh, oh my God, look at this.